The Trailblazer is a student-run paper. It's exclusively online, and we're churning out articles every day for sections such as arts and entertainment, to sports, to local and world news, and everything in between. I told you guys to think about articles you might want to write. Do any of you have any ideas? Yeah, I, uh, um, the Zika virus is to spread to all We decided to make the transition from print to online because that's just the way that the world of journalism is going now. And we want to reflect what's really happening in the real world of journalism. We have a Google folder that's shared to all the editors. And I can click on those and just see them in my Google Drive and I can edit them from there. If you click on the 77, I think you can just like... Yeah, I can take them just on view. This year, because we don't really have a physical issue, we're, we just post things as they happen. And so, um, really the best part of that, if there's like a sports game that's very important, we can put an article up about it right away, as opposed to last year, we would have to basically wait until the end of the month or whenever we were printing. It's not really timely, so it's not helpful. Do you think that people have been tuning into the tweets, or do we think that we should turn to another form of social media? A lot of people follow us. We have about 350 followers. We have tweets that go out every day, and what their goal is is to promote our articles. So we use the 140 characters to be like, oh, do you want to read about the basketball team or our star player? And then that's how we hook them in, and then we have the direct link to our page or the article. Then we promote contests, news, anything about the paper through our morning announcements. Their children being in the school. And it's really easy for people like my parents or my aunts and uncles for me to just send them a link and they can see what the school's up to. We've started putting in other things like um, not just the articles, so ha we have a Spotify playlist that shows up in one spot of the newspaper. We have a weather forecast in another spot. We also have pictures uh, in a gallery from that and things like that. Fashion journalism can be found in magazines, newspapers, books, television shows, blogs, both personal and professional. So you can be considered a fashion journalist in 2016 if you have a blog about clothes. In order for us to be a journalist in this society at whatever level, we need to use social media because that's just the way that it works. You've got Instagram, you've got Snapchat, you've got, you know, Twitter and Facebook. I mean, Facebook, I don't know if it's, if it's as cool anymore. I think they said it's for moms, which would be me, so. <laughs> so this is my OOTD. This is Gavin. And it says, picking corn on the farms of PA in his camo shorts and basic white tee. Hashtag OOTD, hashtag rural, hashtag farm boy. <laughs> OK? You do not walk up to somebody in the cafeteria, snap a picture, walk away, and just post it anywhere without their permission. That is unethical. Yes? Yes. What should you probably do? Ask them. Get their consent. OK. I think it's our job to really teach the kids that just because something is instant and able to be posted and able to discuss that there are old school ethics that go with that. You know, you're writing stories about real people, and you have to use your own words, not words from somebody else's article or website, because it's just so easy. Bill at Pascag Valley has the same task as me. I collaborate with him, and his ideas and my ideas are both benefiting the district. Newspapers aren't dying like some people would lead you to believe. They're just evolving. And so it's important to involve the ways that they're involving without necessarily discarding everything from the past. And I think Alana's um, embracing that, the trailblazer as well. One of the articles that inspired me heavily was one of the first ones I wrote, which is how much is too much. I think that sometimes overachieving, though it can be a good thing, at times we push ourselves a little too far and that's unhealthy. I was expecting a lot more like, not critique per se, but like, arguments back and what their opinions were. And, I, and honestly, I would like that. Like, I would like to hear what other people are thinking on a topic. I know some teachers are using articles as a do now to kind of spark conversation about whatever they're talking about in class that day. And that's really great, too. Like, I really appreciate the support of the staff. New York Times has gone through the college admissions process. I had an urge to write an article after I was deferred from a school. And a lot of people really connected with it. And from that, I got deferred a second time. Hashtag accept denial which is kind of trying to start this, you know, this trend of being able to accept, you know, what's gone wrong. Journalism and the Trailblazer has been a really good outlet for me because it is so open. We do, we can say what we'd like and it, it's been really cool to be able to see the power that our words can have. 
you want to have real world assignments and have them feel like what they're doing actually means something. This project is kind of an extension of that pedagogy where it does mean something and it is real world and you know not only are they getting bylines out for themselves but they're getting to kind of explore their own world around them. For your piece on the presidential candidates I like that.